Hey folks, John Scholes from VMware here. I wanted to show you a pretty amazing video of the functionality unlocked at SoftLayer leveraging vSphere NSX and vSAN. I've created a demo environment and deployed three servers in Dallas, Amsterdam, and Sydney with a fourth site to come online soon here, uh, hence the name Quadru. This is an internal project name that we've uh, created and deployed out at SoftLayer. I've created a universal logical switch leveraging NSX that spans Dallas to Sydney across the SoftLayer private network. Uh, this is an overlay network um, that we've just created in SoftLayer. Attached to that universal logical switch, I've created four virtual machines and attached those virtual machines to uh, VXLAN segment 900,000. Each one of those virtual machines is connected to that segment. And if we look here at the NSX console, you can see that logical switch. And we simply created that switch uh, within five to six clicks. And it spans now from Dallas to Sydney. We've got vCenters in Amsterdam, Dallas, and Sydney that are, are separate. So we're doing a cross vCenter uh, operation here. I'm going to take this long distance 01 VM and migrate it from the Sydney data center where it resides currently over to the Dallas data center. And we're going to migrate both the compute and storage resources. We'll go ahead and select the compute resources where we want this VM to land in Dallas. And we'll just go ahead and select this Dallas primary cluster. vCenter is going to go in and validate to make sure that the hosts in Dallas are compatible with the virtual machine and the hosts in Sydney, and they are indeed. Next, we need to select the storage. What storage target do we want to land on uh, when we arrive in Dallas? And of course, we'll select the vSAN data store there in Dallas and validate that the storage can fulfill the storage policies that we've assigned to that virtual machine and that we have enough free space there. Of course, uh, looks good. Next, we'll select a folder where we want those virtual machines to land. And then finally, we'll select the network segment that we want the virtual machine to be connected to when it uh, arrives in Dallas. And we'll select that same VXLAN segment, 900,000, so that it will be connected to the same VXLAN segment on the other side. So again, this virtual machine is going to migrate. Uh, it should remain connected to that same universal logical switch during its migration and not lose any connectivity to the virtual machines on that segment. Finally, we'll confirm our selections here and send that VM off from Sydney to Dallas. Now the virtual machine is uh, beginning its migration. I'll go ahead and open up a PuTTY console to long distance 01. This is the virtual machine that we're migrating. We'll take a look at the IP configuration. You can see it's on the 192.168.3 subnet. And then let's look at uh, long distance-02, which will remain in Sydney. You can see they're, they're on the same subnet. They're both attached to, again, that same universal logical switch. We'll kick off a ping here. I'm going to ping from long distance 01 to that long distance 02 VM. And you'll notice that the ping times are sub millisecond, uh, indicating that those VMs are sitting right next to each other in the same data center currently. One thing that we'll notice, uh, you can see that that VM's 39% complete with its journey already. You'll notice that those ping times will increase from sub millisecond to um, around 170 milliseconds. And that's going to indicate that the virtual machine has completed its journey and is now in Dallas, again, connected to the same logical switch, but is able to communicate back to that long distance 02 virtual machine that remains in Sydney. That VM is now about 48% complete. And the migration continues. You'll notice no service interruption. You'll also notice that the PuTTY console is still open and functioning, no, no interruption there at all. So long distance 02 is remaining in Sydney, and you can see there the ping times jumped up. So now the virtual machine, long distance 01, is actually communicating across that 
universal logical switch from Dallas to Sydney, and you can see that ping time increase there. So again, the PuTTY session is live, no interruption to that service at all, uh, no interruption to the other virtual machines that are still connected to that logical switch. And it looks like that is uh, completed. Now one thing we'll do uh, to follow up on that, as we look at the inventory here, you can see that that long distance 01 VM is now in Dallas. It made that journey uh, quite quickly. It's connected to VXLAN 900,000. And let's go ahead and kick off this next vMotion. I'll go ahead and move the long distance 02 VM over to Dallas as well. And uh, we'll go ahead and split this group of virtual machines up. We'll leave half in Sydney and move half to Dallas. And let's speed up this process. Now we've kicked off that long distance vMotion for long distance 02. We'll open those consoles back up so we can take a look at the, the communication here. You can see again that long distance 01, which is in Dallas, is pinging uh, at 172 milliseconds uh, across that universal switch to the VM long distance 02, which remains in Sydney. We'll go ahead and kick off a ping from the other direction just so you can see what, what that looks like there. Again, the ping times match. Those two VMs are communicating. One's in Dallas currently, and one is in Sydney. So those ping times are a little bit high. But uh, not a bad latency between Dallas and Sydney. You can see that that previous virtual machine migrated in almost exactly two minutes there. It uh, migrated that whole virtual machine storage and compute um, from the vSAN data store in Sydney all the way to the vSAN data store in Dallas and right at two minutes. And that VM is about five gigs. It's about four gigs of, of disk space and one gig of a memory footprint. So we moved about five gigs across that wire, across that software private network. Uh, not bad. Again, that um, software private network is a really impressive backbone. Um, it uh, is to zero cost for users to move data across that private backbone, so a really significant benefit there. And so here you can see that the ping time now has dropped down to sub-millisecond, so that's a good indicator that the uh, long-distance 02 virtual machine has now made its journey into Dallas and is sitting right next to long-distance 01. Uh, those two virtual machines remained connected the entire time. And we'll go ahead and ping a virtual machine that remains in Sydney now. It's currently in Sydney, but still, again, connected to that same VXLAN segment. So you can see that that ping time is uh, 168 milliseconds. Again, not bad over that software private network between Dallas and Sydney. Pretty impressive. So again, we've migrated two virtual machines from Sydney to Dallas live vMotions. We've moved the entire compute and storage resource from one data center to the next with zero interruption across that software private network. And you can see as we look at the inventories here, we have migrated two of the virtual machines from Sydney to Dallas across vCenters. Uh, and we've again migrated the complete compute and storage resources. All the virtual machines remain connected. They're still connected to that VXLAN 9000 segment, which is an NSX universal logical switch running across the software private network. We didn't need to make any hardware modifications. That's simply an overlay, a software overlay across the underlying IP backbone. Um, all virtual machines, again, remain connected. And this, this opens up the possibility for vSphere replication across that backbone, uh, leveraging SRM for disaster recovery and quite a few other options. So I hope you enjoyed this demo and uh, look forward to showing off some additional functionality in the future. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.